you're tuned into Inside Lowell. Inside Lowell podcast brought to you in part by Washington Savings Bank, serving the greater Lowell community for over 130 years. Make the switch now to Washington Savings Bank. Unicare, offering a variety of plans for people insured under the GIC. At Unicare, your health is their top priority. Boston North Company, offering a wide variety of business solutions to help restaurant and retail clients save money. Boston North. Mahoney Oil Company, providing warmth and protection to families in Greater Lowell and Southern New Hampshire since 1925. That's Mahoney Oil. Francis E. Preventure Insurance, for auto, home, business, and life, trust the agency Greater Lowell has counted on for more than 40 years. Francis E. Preventure Insurance. GoPuff, a grocery store right at your fingertips. Use the code LOWELL20 to receive $20 off your first order of $21, plus free delivery. Download the GoPuff app or visit GoPuff.com today. And by the Massachusetts Pirates, bringing all the hard-hitting action and excitement of arena football to the Songa Center in Lowell. Get your tickets today by visiting MassPiratesFootball.com. And now, time for another Inside Lowell podcast. Inside Lowell. If Lowell is your home, this is your place. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another Inside Lowell podcast. I am your host, Teddy Panos, coming to you from the Inside Lowell studios here in beautiful, historic downtown Lowell. Today, we're going to take an inside look at some Lowell entertainment. Great new show, world premiere show. Coming up this weekend, February 2nd and 3rd, also the weekend of the 9th and the 10th, you don't want to miss this one. If you like laughing, if you like comedy, if you like something with an important message as well, you want to check out the show being produced by the Image Theater. Before we talk to them, I want to quickly thank all of our sponsors. You saw a whole scroll of them there for helping to make this podcast, all Inside Lowell podcasts, and for that matter, all of Inside Lowell possible, as we like to say, Inside Lowell. If Lowell is your home, this is your place. And if great local theater is your thing, you want to be at the Nancy and Richard Donahue Theater. That's right. Four nights in early February because the Image Theater Group is producing Lost Cell Phone Weekend, a musical comedy Um I've kind of learned a lot about this show, and I have to tell you, I'm trying to find a way to get somebody to cover for me at work, because the (laughs) wife and I need to go see this. But we're going to tell you a little bit about it, and you can probably learn a little bit about uh, an important uh, group that's been doing theater for, how how long did you say? 19 years. We're in our 19th year of doing original works, only original work by local playwrights. Love it. The guy who just answered that question is the artistic director of the Image Theater Group, Jerry Bizance. He is also the director and producer of this show, yep. Lost Cell Phone Weekend. Jerry, how are you? I'm great. I'm great. Boy, your intro was fantastic. He, he looks like you've been doing this it's, for a few it's years. It's almost there. like I know what I'm yeah, doing. Right? Yeah, they put me on TV for six years. Wicked there. awesome. Wicked awesome. I got awesome. a face made for radio. <laughs> <and> then... <laughs> Steve Gilbane is the other gentleman with us. He is the composer and playwright of Lost Cell Phone Weekend. Steve, welcome to you as well. Thanks a lot, Ted. Thanks for having us. It's great to have you here. Uh, before we get into the show, because I really want to talk about it, because I, I have a personal experience. I'm, I think I'm really going to sympathize with the character in this, because I kind of lived it with slightly different circumstances. But 19 years, the Image Theater Group here in Lowell. Yeah. What, tell me a little bit about it. What? Uh, how many shows a year do you put on? How did it? How did it come about, Jim? Well, it, it came about actually. Uh, uh, it started out, and in fact, Steve was in on on, on the very beginning of it. Uh, my partner Ann Garvin uh, and I uh, did a lot of theater at Turtle Lane Playhouse. I had just finished directing uh, Jekyll and Hyde, the musical there, and I got a phone call from uh, Ron Richel and Polly Hogan, who are the original founders of the Lyric Stage Company. And they started a new company called Image Theater, ostensibly to do a performance of uh, A Child's Christmas in Wales. And then they decided to move to Canada. And they said, who do we know who's crazy enough to run their own (laughs) theater company? Let's give Jerry a call. (laughs) So this literally happened. They called me, they said, you want a theater company? I said, they said, we can give you a, we got a 501c3 nonprofit theater company. We did all the work, all the book work. All you gotta do is pay us the 500 bucks for the, you know, for the filing. And we're giving the theater company to you. 
and uh, bam. So uh, Anne and I and Steve met and signed the papers, and we said, and officially, originally we were thinking of starting in, in Boston. I ran into a guy named Jerry Beck. Do you remember Jerry I Beck? remember Jerry Beck. I literally well. ran into him on the street. I'm telling you, he's sitting against the Revolving Museum, and he looks at me and he says, what's your story? <laughs> True story. And I go, what do you mean, story? He says, you look like someone who's got a story. I says, I got a story. I say, I got a theater company, and I want to start. And uh, so we've been looking at Boston. He goes, why are you looking at Boston? I said, well, you got MRT here, you know, Merrimack Rep, they're very you know, nationally known, they're fantastic. And he says, well, what do you do? I says, we're going to do nothing but original works by local playwrights. And he says, well, they don't do that. Why don't you do it here? And I thought, go. Oh! So we did. And um, we're, our first show ever was uh, pretty ambitious. It was a show called Mill City Minutes. 27 individual 10-minute plays. Three sessions, okay. seven plays apiece. We had, so we had 27 individual playwrights, 27 casts. And we did it at the, we rented out the Freshman Academy. And it was the first time 10-minute plays were ever performed in the city of Lowell. And, um, and we took off from there. We went on to do uh, a great play called Kerouac's Last Call, where I had the honor of playing Jack Kerouac upstairs uh, at the old court in front of his brother-in-law, which was kind of scary. Um, we did um, uh, a lot of great pieces. We did uh, Distant Music, which is a, a, a play that actually ended up getting published. And there's my actors on the cover. There it is. You open it up. First produced Image Theater. We have. Uh, if you go on our website, we do have a, a, a link that that shows you how many people we have produced, and it's over a hundred. We produced over a hundred. Jack Neary, one of Lowell's, uh, a great playwright from Lowell. We produced a piece of his. Uh, Steve and I wrote uh, three mini musicals. We did called Triple Play the Musical, and so. Um, and we're all about we're all about original, but we are homeless. We're a homeless theater company. We, I was we just are. gonna yeah. ask you because yeah. you mentioned the old court, you we mentioned a couple of other places. Upstairs at the old court. So you'll basically the Whistler wherever, House. wherever they'll give you a venue, basically, right? Right. Have lights, we'll travel. That's right. what we do. Have you ever performed at a venue like the one you're gonna be doing last cell phone weekend? No, at this is state Nancy of the art. This this is, this is, yeah. I was gonna say this must be this big, is big time. Guys, this right? is big time for us. This is uh this is a step up. This is this is this is us really stepping up here. And uh, I'm, I'm really, really pleased and uh, very excited to be there. Um, the Richard and Nancy Donahue the Academic Arts Center at MCC at mm -hmm. 240 Central Street, people. 240 <laughs> Central Street. Okay. okay. Is a fantastic venue. Um, we were there last night uh, setting up the lights. My uh, technical director, John McKenzie, is a genius. He's gelling 40 lights. We have, we're going to do projections for this, too. Um, which is going to blow people mind, people's mind. It goes back and forth from a film noir world to the real world of the writers. So you see the writers as they create the show, and then it goes to film noir. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. So that tells me you have some high ambitions for this show, because yeah. you're not, no, all due respect to the old court and other venues, yeah. this is a theater, yeah. and in, which means you're, you're shooting for the stars here. Yeah. Steve, how did, did you guys, did, did he kind of talk to you the same way Jerry Beck spoke to him? How did you two connect? We were uh, first involved in a little show called The History of Nails. This was the uh, show where uh, that was developed by four improvisers, including myself. And we submitted it to the Hubby Shorts in yeah. Waltham that Jerry was involved I in. I was producing the Hubby Shorts short plays. And yeah. I think we were we were looking for the, the father character, and Jerry raised his hand and said, I want to play that. And my son Max played, you and know. And son Max okay. played his son. The show opens with us building a birdhouse, and my son Max turns and says, Dad? Where do nails come from? <laughs> and I said, and I'm glad you asked that question, son. Let's go back in time with this magic hammer. Dumbest show I ever saw. Yeah. Funniest thing. And I said, this guy's got something. I'm telling you, if you can write a musical about the creation of the common nail, you can do anything. <laughs> so uh, I had been involved in Improv Boston, uh, and they were musical improvisers, and we kind of wanted to explore scripted material mm -hmm. so, and developing it through improv, and that's what we did for that show. And that's how we and we've met. known each other ever since. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how many different shows have you worked on? Oh, Lord. Uh, so I Orca. did uh, yeah. Improv Boston, which is sadly out of business now, um, used to do uh, an annual Halloween musical called Gorefest, and oh. they would have red fruit dye colored 
Cairo syrup sprayed on everybody. You, the they, put, they, put, the, they put a raincoat over you. They put they put plastic over you to see the shell because things were spilling out. It's hilarious. And it was very silly. Uh, was, uh, the script was written by a very talented guy named uh, Don Schumann. And uh, I would write the songs and some of the lyrics. And we did that for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so I, 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 I kind of got my, you know, musical theater writing chops from that. Um, and uh, also, I did uh, a few shows of my own. Uh, I was involved in the uh, New England uh, New Opera and Musical Theater Initiative run out of Berkeley, uh, which is kind of a writer's group. It's, mm -hmm. it's sort of the equivalent of the BMI group out down in New York. Tell them about your New England Emmy, which you just won. So I, I went to <laughs> Berkeley for film scoring. Jerry's going to brag for you. Uh, yeah, you're not going to brag for This guy's yourself. an Emmy Award yeah, winning. He's well. an Emmy Award winning composer, yeah, by so the way. I but. also enjoy doing film scores, and uh, I've done a lot of 48-hour uh, film score, 48-hour film project stuff, which are really fun. You mm -hmm. know, you build a film in 48 hours with a, with a team. Um, you scored two of my movies. And scored two of your movies. Yeah. 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 Memories so, of Dale and Fred and Emil. By the director, uh, a director was doing a series, and uh, I did the music for that and got an Emmy, a New England Emmy. So it sounds like you've dabbled in all genres, but yeah. also in listening to the two of you, it seems like your sweet spot is comedy. Oh, is yeah. that? Yeah. Well, that's well, why? Well, why? I'm the king of shtick, buddy. I'm that. the king of shtick. Forget about it. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 that's a great question. Uh, I've always been attracted to the the improv comedy and the rules of improv comedy. You know, where you do yes and, and you you uh, you 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 uh, you know you raise the stakes in a scene. It's a combination of of theater and comedy and 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 making shit up. <laughs> you know, and so uh, I don't know. It just it's fun. And yet it's, in many ways, I would imagine it's the hardest because you can tell if the audience is enjoying the show, right? But other, you know, if you're doing a tear jerk, I guess you look out and see if people are crying, but you you might have an, an audience full of cold-hearted people who just aren't Absolutely, moved, or, yeah. or don't get scared. But comedy, if they're not laughing- Dying is easy, you know, right comedy is hard. Comedy. That's what Olivia, that's a, Olivia is dying, um, dying when uh, uh, he was dying. Uh, who is it? Uh, oh, who, I thought that was Mel Brooks. No, was, <laughs> no, Olivia, Olivia on his deathbed said this. Um, um, uh, an actor friend of his said, Larry, this must be tough for you. He says, no, comedy is tough. And it is, it is. Mm -hmm. To be able to make people laugh. And I wanna tell you something. This show will make you laugh. It is absolutely hilarious. And you'll know about 15 minutes into the yeah, show. Yeah, we'll oh, yeah, we will. Because it's going to be a long rest of February it, 2nd, 3rd, right. 9th, and 10th. It's uh, early on, right? It's, it's made the cast and crew laugh. We but laugh that doesn't the rehearsal, but that doesn't mean anything. Right. Well, you don't get it. Oh, well, they'll get it. Our inside little audience has been able to see your little one minute commercial for yeah. it. I've learned a little bit more in talking to Jerry. This is this is a phenomenal show. How did how did you get the idea? Lost cell phone weekend and you're billing it as an addictive new musical. Where the idea Our producer is, is billing it that way. <laughs> that um, way. You know, the guy who answered the phone. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> right in the middle of the podcast. <laughs> so um, I do it over here too. So I, uh, I the first draft uh, that I had a little table reading with some friends was in 2014. That was a long I've been tinkering with this for a while. And that was about the time where they were just starting to talk about cell phones being addicted and i think that was right around the time where the uh you know the big platforms were using algorithms to start you know juicing their content to get people you know jacked up about you know so you only see stuff that made you mad you know that would keep you engaged get more page likes and clicks it hit and your so dopamine it, it hits your dopamine bam and you know it would be good for the platform and the platform stakeholders i mean that's the bottom line right um, but they uh, they were just starting to talk about that. And so I'm kind of a film noir fan, you know, and it occurred to me that the big addiction, the first addiction movie was uh, Lo uh, Lost Weekend, you know, with Ray Milan, Billy Wilder uh, wrote and directed it. And um, and I just started in the back of my head. What would it look like if you told that story about 
addiction. If you were in a world that was exactly the same, except the technology had progressed to today. So it looks like the 1940s, sounds like the 1940s, but they, they've got cell phones and, you know, all the technology. And that's the addiction. And so it's, it's kind of a ridiculous uh, premise, but I thought it might be a smashing together of, of you know, disseparate things that would be kind of fun. To Not see. a ridiculous premise at all. I guarantee you everybody in that audience will relate. <laughs> well, how many, that's what we how, have. think about it. Think about it. How many times you get in your car, right? Okay, you get in your car and you start driving and you go a mile and you go, I got my cell phone. You're doing a Yui. You might kill somebody on the road trying to get back so you get to your your cell phone. We are so addicted to these things and to social media. And, and the character of Don Burnham going to a and b in Vermont <laughs> with no cell phone coverage and suffering the DTs. It's absolutely... And we got such a great cast, too. So, yeah. I mean, so, our cast is phenomenal. So, I'll tell you my story because mm -hmm. it's it's somewhat similar in, in the the addiction is real. So I'm in Jamaica mm -hmm. with um, my current wife. Then, you know, we were living together. And it was the second to last night. We were flying out on a Sunday. Friday night, we're staying in the pool to see the, the sun set. Mm -hmm. And jump in one more time. Leave the phone on the table next to our chairs mm -hmm. with a towel over it. Ouch. When I come out, the phone is gone. Oh. And we go through the, you know, now you got to try to track it down. You have any video? I'm pretty sure one of the pool boys grabbed it. But then, anyway, now we, we're we like, all right, well, I'm screwed till we get back to yeah. home yeah. on Sunday yeah. night. Flight Monday, I'll have to go get a new cell phone. Get out of the shower on Friday, get dressed to go out for dinner. We're leaving the room. I start searching for my phone. Instinctive. As we're leaving the room, what my routine before I always close the door, so I don't turn around in my car and have to go back. Right. Home, I always pat my back right, in my right. pocket because that's where I put that's my, what I do. my cell phone. And I did that routine going to dinner, sitting at the table, you know, take it out of the pocket so I don't sit on it, put it on the table. It, I went through that routine, and I'm going to tell you, it wasn't until Sunday when we were sitting in the lounge at the airport waiting for those last couple of hours for our flight that I could finally kind of exhale. I finally realized I, I'm, I don't have a phone, so I stopped doing the at my back pocket it's it, but it, it's an, the, the addictive it, it's routine it's scary part of my life for so long that when i lost that phone it must be worse than actually have that phone and not have any cell phone well, reception I, I would drive around looking for a new hotel to be honest with but you. not only that you're, you're you're talking about a generation of of young people now who are raised they you know that's all they've known and and they 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 can't even look you in the eyes now no i'm serious i mean i saw four kids at, 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 a, at a bus stop waiting for the school bus and they weren't even talking to each other. And I remember the days when I was waiting in the school bus, we were all jiving and joshing and talking and, you know, and they're just like, they're like zombies. And, 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 and so Steve's musical, uh, it, it, okay, okay, it's a satire. Okay, it's funny. It's funny as hell, okay? But it is about a serious issue. And, um, and, and as we all know, comedy and satire um, can really make you think about very serious things. And all this, this satire is, is based it, on... It is, it is. Yeah. So uh, coincidentally, we're recording this for folks who are watching it on Monday, January uh -huh. 29th. Today is the day Lowell High School is instituting its no cell phone policy. Wow. God bless you, the Lowell kids High. Are losing their mind. God bless you. What's interesting is wow. the superintendent, the principal, the, the educators are all saying something Jerry just said. It's not so much that they're just going to read the phone while the teacher's talking they're not engaging with other students and yeah. when they do it in other schools they notice the students actually start talking to each other right and that's, they're pushing that as a as a big that's reason great. yeah it, 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 it's it, right and 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 not only that i mean I, can you imagine you know years later you know the posture everybody's gonna be walking like this <laughs> <laughs> i have to say it in 2014 as the years progressed I kept waiting for this problem to go away and the show to be irrelevant. And it just got worse. You know, I, I it's like back then TikTok didn't exist. Yeah. yeah. Uh, influencers right. weren't a thing. So so technology and culture has has morphed a little bit, but it's still a problem. You know, it, it's it's to me, it's uh, it, it, I was amazed that no one's written a musical, a show about this yet. I was floored and, and I kept bugging Steve. Uh, and uh, Anne yeah, and I, I, the way I remember, well, Anne I and kept I kept bugging you to look at my script. But... Hey, <laughs> <laughs> so, so we already talked about how challenging it is to do comedy. Yeah, 
why'd you have to add music to it? Because well, this I don't guy can write a tune. This I guy's a great the, composer. The process of that is fascinating to me. I mean, I mean, all songs tell a story, but to do it for two hours instead of for three minutes and 30 seconds, like most songs, so, is, a, is a different animal. So I, I was pretty Hour 20, by the how, way, folks. How you, hour 20. <laughs> how, you, how, you, how you find those song moments. I was pretty familiar with how to do that and you know, to look at a story and then find, okay, this is, this is a likely place to have a song. You know, a song in a musical theater stops the story and opens out the character, you know, basically, and tells what's going on in their head. It's almost like a Shakespearean monologue. It, um, improv so. people have three types of songs. This is what Steve taught me, right? Tell, tell them what types of songs. Uh, yeah, this is an improv. Yeah. This is there's this there's is, three uh, types of songs in musical Jerry, theater. Uh, who's the uh, 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 Jerry Herman? Yeah. It's a musical theater, you know, trope. Uh, you have an I wish song from the protagonist. You have an I Which am like, you song. know, under the sea. That's an I, right, wish. I right. wish. I wish. And that that gives them a, a you know, an arc mm -hmm. for, for where they're going. Uh, and then there's the I am songs for the various villains. I am my Don Quixote, the Lord of That's an uh, I am song. Yeah, okay. I was thinking the, the Satan song in the uh, uh, South Park musical. Uh, right, Uncut. that's an I am song. <laughs> Uh, and then there's a romantic, there's a love song, right? Uh, then there are duets and love songs. Yeah, right. so it, it's, and doing all those Gorefest shows actually sort of honed that craft, oh, you know, of, of building that. Because those are all musicals that, you know, worked on their own merits. Basically. There has to be a reason for the, for the, for the character to sing. Uh, otherwise, it's stupid. So right. in, in Steve's show, in this show, the characters sing because it furthers the plot. And you know, and besides the, the fact, and reveals, reveals the character, character reveals yeah. something about the character. Besides the fact that the the lyrics are incredibly clever, and um, and um, he has everything from waltz tempos. He has uh, you've got a you've got a Gilbert and Sullivan uh, type of uh, rap pattern, yeah. a patter song. Um, uh, we've got you know, we've got a cabaret, we've jazz got a cabaret jazz thing. song. Yeah. We've got the sultry, sexy song when the woman says, "Put that down and kiss me." You know, she <laughs> sings to him. And um, and we have a five-piece band. Very, we have a five-piece band. We're very excited musicians. about that. And I just want to name some of our, our actors. We're very excited. Um, we have a couple who are a real couple in real life, and they're playing uh, the uh, our our lead couple. Um, and uh, Ken Meehan, Ken and Diane Meehan. Uh, Ken Meehan uh, served our country admirably in Iraq and Afghanistan, and is a Chelmsford policeman. And he is amazing. Yeah. This guy sure. is like. Well, I don't know why he's not on Broadway. He's phenomenal. Singing voice, handsome, you know. Uh, and, come. and boy, not only that, he's got the film noir thing down pat. Yeah, yeah. He's got it. And his wife, Diane, great, great voice, just wonderful actress. Uh, our buddy Phil Thompson, who I've worked with for years, um, he plays the bartender. You know, you got a monkey on your back, Mr. Burnham, you know, that kind of thing. Um, we've got Casey Moore. She's a newcomer to us, but she's a local gal and she's fantastic. And then we've got uh, David Hansen, um, who plays. Uh, He's great. Too. He plays the creator. He plays the creator. So you're going to see the creator, the people creating the show. And then we see the show that they create all done in one show. So there, as you mentioned, they're all local. How, how do you go? About Everybody's do local. You, do you have people in mind for the shows, or do you actually do? Uh, we held on. We held. We held. Auditions? We held auditions for a couple of the characters, but other people I have worked with in the past, and I know I can trust, and I know how good they are. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. You know. Um, I just, I just, can I go, can I go through my little list of thank you people just for okay, seconds? Because if I one, don't, one yeah, okay, I have great. To ask one, one yeah, more sure, yeah, go for it, yeah. You can't do your list until I check off mine. <laughs> because the kiss, kiss, kiss what's, what's, is on the what's list. What's the message you want the audience to leave with? Every, every great story has a, has a message mm. behind it. What's, besides the fact that, Put your damn cell phone. Well, down I think it, attention to the world around yeah, you. Yeah, I think. What's, it, the, what's the message that, that they're gonna leave with? It's something like that. It's 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 hopefully to raise an awareness of that you, you, what you're doing of, of you know reaching back for your phone impulsively, uh, compulsively, um, to be more thoughtful. You know about about your use of the phone. I don't think we're saying throw your phone out. No. That's not really a thing that you can do at you the can't. Sense, you know. But to be more uh, thoughtful about it, and uh, you know, the other thing that we do, and, and, and that uh, Steve and I, and actually one of the actors, Phil, does, and Steve, I thank Steve for turning me onto this, is hiking. In all honesty, mm. we get we get out to the White Mountains a lot, 
we do a lot. I do a lot of climbing. We do a lot of hiking. Phil and and I and and Steve Where and we and, and we put those cell phones. We don't want them. We we put them yeah. away. And he, and there there is there is a good thing happening. We see a lot of very young people on the on the mountains. A lot of young a lot of young people who are willing to just take their cell phones, you know, and just forget about them and just get out and look at the sunset, you, you look at the stars, watch, look at the sky. You can't you know? look at your cell phone because you'll trip on a rock. And you, you will, have to and you may die. <laughs> if you're on Mount Adams right. and you look at your cell phone, you could die. That's right. That's a good preventative. <laughs> right. uh, every great show, every, every small show, big show, giant show, there's people that put it together. Obviously, you need some sponsors. You need right. some people yeah. oh, yeah. behind the scenes to help you raise money, oh. sell tickets, etc. Hit it, Mr. Who, producer. Who Putting my glasses on for this because we have <laughs> never we have never had more help. Uh, and I want to thank so many people for having belief and faith in this show, which, in my opinion, can go on. I think that this show, because it's only got five characters in a single set and projections, and we'll own the projections, this show could be done all over the country in black box theaters all over the country. I'm not saying this is a Broadway show. This is an off-Broadway show, and we are going to pitch it. I've already talked to two Broadway producers about this show, believe it or not, and they, they've shown some interest. So anyway, I want to start out with the Low Cultural Council. We're very fine. fine. I want to start out with also the First Lady of the Arts in Low, who is a fantastic person, Nancy Donahue, gave us a generous donation. And, you know, that was wonderful. I mean, I know she's big with MRT. That does fantastic work, by the way. Well, but you know how important she is to the she, art scene she's, when they name a theater. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, yeah, but saying, she... All she doesn't just, they didn't name anything after me, I'll tell you. She, <laughs> okay, we, she's, she, I wouldn't call her a mensch. She's a menchette. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, also, uh, my friend Jay Lenahan and the Greater Lowell Foundation was uh, very, very helpful in giving us some money. Um, Sarah at the Whistler House has been wonderful. Um, and um, Lowell Celebrates Kerouac kicked in uh, with some money. Brush With Art helped us out. I got to thank Finn Barshian of the Old Court. Um, the Old Court Pub has been there for Image Theater ever since day one. Um, they are fantastic. Besides the fact that they, you know, they, they make great, you know, great food and everything. I want to thank the Athenian. You guys are awesome. You took an ad. Athenian Corner, great restaurant. You got to eat there, man. It's fantastic food. Um, uh, the Regent Theater in Arlington uh, gave us their space. Uh, the mm -hmm. Regent Theater in Arlington right. gave us their space to uh, to do our uh, what's called the sits probe, the first time that the the band plays and the and, and the people sang. Um, the Chelmsford Art Center kicked in and gave us some Monday night right. rehearsals. Uh, WCAP Sam Poulton was fantastic in, in running our ads and I think our clever ads. I want to give a kudos to Matt McLaughlin yeah. who put together our, our that crazy ad that we've been showing, which I think is genius. It's fantastic. He he did a, such a good job. Yeah, and, and if you folks haven't seen it, go to Inside Lowell. It's on our website, also on our YouTube it's channel. It's funny it, it, it as hell. What the show is going to be about? It's so clever and. Um, yeah, I think I covered everybody. There you go. All right. So here's the here's the big part. How do folks get tickets? Four shows, February 2nd and 3rd, Friday, Saturday night, February 9th and 10th. Again, Friday, Saturday right. night at the Nancy Donnie computer. Right. How do folks get tickets ahead of time? Will you be selling them at the door? Yes, we will. The, 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 the tickets, okay, the shows are all at 8 o'clock. We do have a snow date, which we hope we'll never have to use, which would be uh, Sunday matinee uh, the 11th at two. Hopefully we don't have to use it. Uh, so all shows are at eight, um, Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, and they can go to www.imagetheater.com. Very important. Theater is spelled E-R. So that's www.imagetheater.com. There's an R-E in Denmark. <laughs> you don't want to go to Denmark. And so, um, yeah, out, it's, it's very easy. Um, tickets are only, only $30 and boy, you're going to get your money's worth. And, um, I just think that um, if you like to laugh, or if you're a big fan of old movies, you know, old black and white movies, um, you're going to love this show. You know, and and uh, Steve O'Connor, our good friend Steve O'Connor, the best author in Lowell, by the way. I've got every one of his books. Um, Steve told me that after he saw the staged reading of it last year at the Whistler House, he said, Jerry, I don't look at my cell phone the same way anymore. <laughs> and that's that, the goal and, of the show. And that's and that and that's you know, and that's and that's even if you even if it just a little bit makes yeah. you aware, then we've done our job. So image theater with an ER dot com dot com you can also purchase them at the theater. At the door, yeah, yeah the yes, yes. Uh, it's it's a quick show, what, eighty minutes? Brief it's uh yeah, hour and twenty running, uh no no, act, no no intermission. It's all done in one act. We 
we fly with this baby, man. So even if you have to use that snow day, Super Bowl Sunday, guys. Oh, you minute. won't miss the Super Bowl. You, you get, take the wife. I don't want to have some fun, and then you know you'll have. Even to though my football. bills aren't in it again. <laughs> That's why easy, I went, That's easy. why I went to Super Bowl Sunday as a snow. I don't want to go there. Josh but, Allen. Hey, this uh, this sounds like a blast. I'm <laughs> glad. I, I love comedy, uh, comedy theater, especially. I think personally for me, when I go out to a show, I want to be entertained. I want to laugh. Like, you are. That's what's important to me. I'll tell you, we're still I laughing, and we've we've read these. We've we've heard this script a hundred times, and we're still laughing. I mean, it's that funny. Awesome. Yeah. Steve Gilbane, Jerry Bazance. Thank you so much. Good luck. Break a, break a leg, as they say. Break right? a bunch of legs. But, thanks, guys. But not for real. And uh, thanks to all of you for joining us as well. Again, Lost Cell Phone Weekend, an addictive new musical. Check it out. Come to InsideVol.com. We've got a feature on it. Go to our YouTube page, all our other video channels, and you can see the one-minute ad for it. Give you a taste of what it's about. Great show. Hopefully this podcast gave you a taste of what it's about as well. Till next time, everybody stay safe. And as we like to say, inside Lowell, if Lowell is your home, this is your place.